Welcome back to the shop and to the channel. We're continuing on the disassembly of the KT horizontal mill. Now that I have the table and the feed distribution box out of the knee, the next thing I want to do is pull off the saddle. I'm going to start by removing this front gib screw, but of course, like most things on this machine have been, it's pretty stuck in there, so I'll resort to a little battery powered advantage. Well, I need to get better access to the gib screw on the back, so I need to pull this saddle forward. Of course, it's pretty heavy and it doesn't ride very smoothly at this point. So give me a lever long enough and a fulcrum and I can move the world. The gib is stuck in there pretty good, so rather than even try to do anything else, I've got a brass punch and, of course, my favorite brass hammer. I should be able to get it started enough that I can get my hands on it. That should give me enough room now to pull it out from the front. I need to remove this um, coolant return downpipe that's attached to the bottom of the saddle. There are four filister head screws that hold it. I'm going to pop out the table drive gear here. This feeds down into the crossfeed bracket that engages the power feed. There are three socket head cap screws that attach the crossfeed bracket to the underside of the saddle. Well, this first screw is in there so tight that when it gave loose, it gave loose with such a snap that I thought I had broken off the end of this hex drive in the head of the cap screw. I was not going to be happy if that had been the case. The power feed bracket is doweled to the bottom side of the saddle, so I need to kind of pry it out. I do have some flexibility between the saddle gib being removed and that the power feed shaft itself is not inside that telescoping set of brass tubes. With it loose now, I should be able to pick up this side of the saddle and get it out of the way. Well, I think that we can go ahead and remove the saddle now, or maybe we can't. So at first glance, I was thinking that the handle for the saddle lock was getting hung up on this part of the knee casting. There's a set screw that holds the saddle lock shaft into this collar. 
uh, once I take that out, I should be able to tap the handle out from the top. Okay, so we can now go ahead and lift the saddle off of the knee. Not so fast. You know, I saw this thing when I was taking the handle out and it didn't dawn on me that, yeah, I need to take the trip stud off of the bottom of the saddle. Now we can remove the saddle off of the knee. We'll do a rudimentary quick clean here on these knee ways just to kind of get a look at them. There's a lot more wear on these ways than I saw on the top of the saddle or the bottom of the table. So no major dings or major score marks. So I think these look pretty good. Uh, again, they should probably be uh, scraped or reground and scraped, but it's just not in the budget. Same thing with the saddle ways. They look like they're in fairly decent condition. Again, there's probably tons of wear on them being 80 years old. Uh, but overall, I think they'll do for me. They Everything does need to be cleaned. The oil passages are caked full of either grease or dried oil. So it's going to take a little bit of effort to get these back into some serviceable condition. The last major component I want to get off of the mill is this crossfeed bracket. This houses the nut for the saddle lead screw as well as some gearing that transmits power up into the table for left to right power feed. It's just a little bit tricky. There's these four Philister head screws that hold this flange onto the side of the bracket. So I've got my low profile right angle screwdriver to try to work them out. And unfortunately, I don't think I'm going to be able to remove this, this right side of the telescoping cover from the mill side. The parts diagram shows that there's an O-ring back there and some kind of retainer bushing that I'm not going to be able to get to from the front. I've tried working it out, but I'm afraid that either I'm going to end up doing damage to it or I won't be able to get it back in. The front side's a little more straightforward. There's this threaded piece um, in the knee that I just need to use this spanner wrench to unscrew. Unfortunately, that's about as far as I'm going to go with the disassembly of the mill. I would have liked to have removed this power feed bracket, but to do so is a little more complicated and requires me to start undoing stuff I've already completed. I would have to remove the drive belts, the pulley, the pulley bracket, the power feed takeoff bracket, the long coolant pipe, the coolant pipe cover, the chip guards, the cover for the power feed takeoff bracket, and then that would finally give me access 
to remove that power feed bracket. I think I'll pass. It's going to get a paint job, but that's about it. Well, that's it for this video. Short one this week. I did manage to get the thing accomplished that I wanted to, and that is to get this saddle off of the knee. There is so much gunk inside of this thing, it's going to take me days to get it clean. Don't forget to hit that like button. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think of the process so far. If you're a subscriber, I thank you again. If you're not, hit that subscribe button and that bell icon so you'll know when another video drops. As always, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you on the next one.